I had amazing foster parents. He did everything he could to keep me. We tried so hard, but CAS wouldn't make me a ward of the court. I was kicked out of my foster home. My foster dad gave me $300 cash. I was so scared and I don't know. I don't even know. Nobody would listen to me. Like nobody gets kicked out of CAS that young. I'd never heard of it. I feel like I've been skydiving for their life. I've been perpetually homeless since. I'm probably only gonna stay out here for a little longer, actually. He's really cold. When I see people in t-shirts, I'm just like, I wish. I wish, I wish I could go for a walk in a t-shirt. I don't feel like I live a bad lifestyle or anything, so. My name is Christopher. I was born and raised in Oshawa. Um, I came to Toronto when I was 16. My parents were never happy with me. I never got as much as my brothers and stuff, but I was so misbehaved. And then I came out at 10 years old as gay. <laughs> um, and that really threw everything off track. And they put me in a foster care on a temporary care agreement. However, I was kicked out on my 16th birthday because I was not a crown ward. We're at Young and Shepherd because this is one of the only places where I can make any money when I panhandle. I come here because the people care more and they're more giving and they ask me about my situation and stuff and I'd rather tell someone what's going on and them know they're helping me. The kindness of strangers and the encouragement of strangers is the only reason I'm still going. The hardest nights I get through because someone, random person will walk up to me and ask if I'm okay. Thank you. What's his name? Casper. Sorry? Casper, like the ghost. Casper, oh yes, of course, for the whiteness. You wanna say hi, go say hi. Well, Casper is the world's best dog and the sweetest dog in the world. Um, he's totally my anchor. I've trained him so well and I'm so proud of him and people on the streets, even if I'm not panhandling or something, always ask about him and want to say hi and I never hesitate to let them. And when I, then I also never hesitate to tell them I'm homeless because they say hi to my dog. And I'm, I say, oh yeah, you think he's cute? He looks pretty good for homeless. Um, and they are so, so passionately kind and helpful. He's just my world. He's the best dog in the world. I got him a month after my partner killed himself and I don't know what I'd do without him. I had amazing foster parents and then I had a foster dad who was amazing. And I got five credits in three months at school when I was there. He did everything he could to keep me. We tried so hard but CAS wouldn't make me a ward of the court. Can you explain what being a ward of the court would be? Um, it's when custody is gone, uh, given to CAS permanently from your parents. Um, I would have probably never faced homelessness. I would have been able to afford a place at the very least. So how many years right now have you been homeless? Off and on eight years and a lot of people have just cut me off because of that, you know? After the first two years, it starts to look like you're doing it to yourself. Me and my friend Amy came out here from Oshawa, and we were getting an apartment together. It fell through, and we had no idea where to go. We used like a dollar and a safety blanket and stayed in the woods. We've been connected with Streets to Home since the day we got to that encampment, and we still have not been housed. When Street Still Homes first came and saw my tent, they didn't ask how I was doing, they asked me if I needed free needles. Like the only thing they do when they come by is hand out drug supplies. I've never seen them do anything else. And I just found out that I wasn't on the central housing waiting list, so that's like a year and a half that isn't accounted for it because they didn't put me on the list and said they did. So how long is that? 15 years. Last time I interacted with them even, they were like, do you want us to connect you with the shelter? And I said, no, I don't want any more temporary solutions. And they're like, so you're okay? I'm like, no, I would really like to get housed. And they said, well, I'm sorry, but, I'm sorry, but we cannot help you. Um, but if you'd like some free needles, 
there's the works and there's the resources I'm going to use today even to get free needles and there's no excuse for streets to homes to be going to homeless people and giving them. It's supposed to be streets to homes, not streets to graves. I actually quit on my own. Like, oh, great. Yeah, thank you. Good for you, that's awesome. Yeah, and then I overdose on public first on a relapse. I'm being good now, 30 days since, so. Thanks for the supplies, guys. Have a good day. Bad seed is because my dad put my name in his phone as bad seed. The M is for my partner who killed himself. The ghost is what came up on Google when I looked up worthless. This means that you're not allowed to not know how you're feeling. That was quick and good. I, I thought it was gonna take me a while. How do you feel? I feel a bit better. I feel just awake now. I genuinely feel better, which is annoying actually. It's part of a huge problem with the addiction. The best way to describe it is you feel like you're starving once you're in withdrawal. It's no different than starvation. Your body thinks you're starving. It's the same feeling entirely, but it starts in your spine instead of your stomach. Meth makes you not tired, it makes you not hungry, and if you're addicted to fentanyl, it makes you not dope sick. But even that's a problem that I need to deal with soon, but it's not the most prominent one. All I want is to go to work, go home and walk my dog, but this is what Canada wants for me. Like, sometimes I feel like I'm not even a citizen. All I've tried to do is establish myself and failure after failure. Because all I want is to be a functional member of society. I could use an occupation. If I have nothing behind me, I really need a job, like just to occupy myself so I don't have to go out and panhandle every day. Like all I'm doing when I do that is making sure I'm not at the hotel to get opiates. A full-time job would absolve that problem and I've applied for a few, but I haven't gotten any callbacks. To kill yourself, honestly, I'm really trying very hard to get my shit together, but I would have told him to kill himself because it's not worth it. Going through this shit and then having nobody believe you is really not a nice way to live. That's all I would say to him. I am sorry for that answer, but honestly, that's my answer. Got more motivation than ever to get, like, just stable, you know? Because I will help other people, trust me. I would become a harm reduction worker, I would become a CAS worker, and I would give that extra mile of patience that I needed. Touching on that last question, if I could talk to 16 year old me, there would be no point in telling him to seek resources all elsewhere. Because nobody's going to understand or believe it. But if things can turn around, that question's answer will change, and that's what I'm praying for.